Hello, 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 everybody. This is Sharita, Prophetess Sharita, coming to you with a Say Yes moment. Here at Say Yes, my motto is if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. Today, I am coming to you with a prophetic uh, uh, enlightenment, so to speak. Um, I've been doing prophetic properties, prophetic properties. And the prophetic properties, what I have been doing is I have been sharing you highlights and information about the jobs of the prophets in the Old Testament of the Bible. And what I've been sharing and explaining to everyone is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if the prophets in the Old Testament were doing certain things, we should also still be doing those certain things today because God doesn't change. We change, but God doesn't change. So, today I am talking about Jeremiah. Jeremiah. So, as I talk to you today about Jeremiah, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what his purpose is. And um, I'm actually going to tell you his theme. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. But I am not going to, per se, read a lot from the Bible. But the one thing that I will point out about the book of Jeremiah is that you read, need to read Jeremiah 25, Jeremiah 26, Jeremiah 27, 28, as well as 29. Because if you read the ch chapters that are leading up to God saying, I know the plans that I have for you. My plans are to give you an expected end. So... If we read what happens prior to that, we will see and we will read about the prophet Hananiah and how the people preferred the prophet Hananiah, who was actually a false prophet. And they preferred the false prophet over Jeremiah. So why, did he, why was he preferred over the prophet Jeremiah? is what you need to take time to read, take time to study, and take time to dive into the Word. You need to do a deep dive and a deep excavation of the why. Why did the masses of people prefer the false prophet over the prophet of God? So, um, the prophecies of this book, the prophecies of the book of Jeremiah, um, the first 19 chapters in Jeremiah we see messages of Je messages from Jeremiah being preached um, in a way of reproof for sin and denounce denunciation of judgment. So there's sin going on and you know the word reproof is something that we actually need to get into because in the New Testament the word of God tells us in the book of Second Timothy chapter 4 to preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So you've got to be indoctrinated, number one. You have got to preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. And then it also tells you to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. So what was happening here is very similar to what was going on with Isaiah. There was some things that were going on that shouldn't have been going on. And the prophet of God was coming to say, hey, you who? This is what's going on. This is what's going on. And this is what's going on. So what we see happening here is that um, there were a lot of occasions that, um, you know, there was a lot of things that were not supposed to be going on that were going on with the children of Israel. So. What we see is that, you know, God keeps promising the people blessings. God keeps promising the people blessings. And well, what happens is God has a season where he says, you know, I'm kind of just up here thinking about how I'm going to handle you guys. So I have the prophet down here. You're ignoring the son that I sent to minister to you, to cover you, to bless you, to lead you and to guide you kind of overlooking him and you kind of not paying him any attention so you know he says i've got to set time for your deliverance from these negative situations because what happened it happens is is the jews are in and out of captivity okay they're in and out of captivity so 
what is happening is that God is trying to tell them, like, look, I keep trying to bless you, but you keep going over here. You keep doing what you're not supposed to be doing. So you got to be careful and you've got to be mindful. So um, also we see that he is uh, one of those prophets that also prophesies the Messiah, which is the coming of Jesus Christ. And um, the people did not regard the prophetic words of Jeremiah. They kind of saw him, heard him, but he was kind of, you know, dismissed, you know, for whatever reasons, because they, they preferred to be with people that were literally telling them that they could kind of do whatever it was that they wanted to do instead of, you know, listening to the instructions of God. So... Um, he sent basically warnings after warnings uh, to the people and you know a lot of times the people did not adhere to um, you know it not did they didn't adhere so what we see here is that Jeremiah is ju uh, basically preaching and teaching and prophesying that there's going to be judgment for their sins but even though God is going to judge them for their sins the judgment period is only for an allotted time and that there will be only a season that they go through trials and tribulations because we see in the book of Jeremiah 29 that he says, okay, well, go ahead out here and marry, um, take your children, be fruitful, be multiply, and be, uh, multiply. If you get blessings, is because you're getting blessings of your own hand because you're depending on this negative situation over here you're dependent on your own flesh you're dependent on other people you're depending on things that are not of a godly continence to cover you and keep you and because you are looking around and because you prefer these prophets that cause you to dream dreams that i did not send to you what is then happening is that um you know sin brought forth the judgment of God. So God got God left them in their flesh for a season while he pondered what he should do. Because Jeremiah also wrote the book of Lamentations and you'll see maybe Lamentations chapter 30 something where he is praying and lamenting on behalf of the people and it and, and God says and he took the clouds and just covered his ears like he says you know what Jeremiah your heart is that of a true genuine son but right now I have got to put you on mute because I have got to ponder these people. I have given them everything and they still are choosing sin over me. So um, what it is is that God wants the people to repent. And it says in Jeremiah 29, it tells you that, okay, I'm going to leave you alone because you're after these false prophets. But I do have a plan to bless you. But the blessing is coming in a lot of time. The blessing is coming later on. The blessing is coming later on, which means your children that are being birthed during this time and during this season are going to be the ones to reap the blessing because the blessing is coming in 70 years. So the descendants literally are probably going to reap the harvest of certain blessings because the parents were literally in sin and they were going after false prophets. But God is saying that when you that there's going to come a time where your hearts are going to turn back to me. Your hearts are going to turn back to me because God saw restoration. God pr prophesied restoration through multiple different prophets. And as he prophesied, I know my plans that I have for you. My plans are to bless you and to give you an expected end. So although you are in a, a contrary situation right now, you will turn back to me sooner or later. You know, and so when you turn back to me, I'm going to, you're going to come and you're going to pray to me and I'm going to literally bless you. I'm going to hark out when you hearken unto me, I'm going to hearken unto you. I'm going to give you reciprocity when you come and when you pray to me and when you are obedient to me, when you are hearkening to my blessings, I'm going to turn around and hearken to your words. And as you are obedient to my commandments, I'm going to be obedient to your prayers. And there is nothing that I'm going to withhold from you. Is what the Lord will say is that, um, you know, that, um, that, you know, he was going to bless them, but it was going to be, the blessings was basically on pause and the blessing was for a future time that the blessings was for a future time. So what we see 
in regards to the characteristics of Jeremiah, I have a few things that are written here. So, number one, he was a prophet from his youth. And we see that in, in Jeremiah chapter 1, it says, you know, he was a prophet from his mother womb. Um, he continued um, as a prophet for nearly 50 years. Um, he was a reproving prophet sent by God to tell his people of their sins and to warn them of the judgment of God that, that would be coming upon them. So, you know, a lot of people don't want to be told that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. But the truth is, is that I got to tell you that is what we're doing is wrong. And if we don't change, there's going to be consequences. And that's what the prophet did. The prophet was prophesying prophetic warnings. And if a prophet is not giving you prophetic warnings, you might want to run because there is no perfect church. Jesus Christ in the New Testament in the book of Revelations, what did he do? He addressed the seven churches. He called out their sins. And then he told them to do what? He said, repent before I put your candlestick out. Repent while you still have time. Repent, repent, repent because you don't know the hour nor the, nor the time of the coming of Jesus Christ. So after that, um, let's see, um, he preaches, uh, you know, he preaches and, you know, he was known as the weeping prophet because basically he lamented and he was so mournful because of the sins of the people. Like his feelings was literally hurt. Jeremiah's feelings was literally hurt and he lamented. He cried because his heart was heavy because I know that they're sinning. I know that they're not changing. I know that they think that they're going to go to heaven just because they said they think they, well, you know, I'm going to see them when I get to heaven. No, they're not going to heaven because they was lost in sin. So what we got to understand is that the prophet lamented because people were making up their own rules, regulations, and their own thoughts because they were listening to false prophets. They were listening to the false prophets. So, um, he was known as the weeping prophet because he lamented for the sins of the people. And um, he knew that uh, judgment was about to come upon him. Judgment is coming. You know, so when we see things like different uh, illnesses that are constantly being uh, placed upon the people, um, things like, you know, HIV, um, things like um, not just AIDS, but um, we got cancer, we have COVID. When you see things that are incurable, that are keep um, kind of uh, occurring and, think, and, and constantly transpiring, if you go into the book of Deuteronomy 28, you will see that God says, if you, if you are obedient to my commandments, there's blessings. If you are disobedient, there are curses. So the curses is sometimes sickness. So it says also that um, he was a prophet that did suffer and he was persecuted by his own people um, a whole lot. You know, and he uh, he lived and preached uh, to the Jews and he preached to them and he told them, uh, you know, he told them what God told him to do and they did not like him. Don't nobody like somebody that tells you that what you're doing is an abomination. Uh uh, what you're doing is a sin. If we don't change, if you don't change. If you don't change, that that there is no heaven, you know. Um, I shared in my uh, exhortation or my uh, prophetic, um, my pref, pro, the prophetic properties of Isaiah, that you know God allows us to know that hell has enlarged herself. Why? Because people are going after other gods. Why? Because they're running after things that are abomination to God. Why? Because they are choosing to love the world and the things of the world. And they are choosing to be a part of things that are contrary to God instead of following God and the word of God and the will of God. So we, we see the prophet uh, 
Jeremiah was very disheartening because he was a good guy. He was an intercessory prophet. He had a, a big uh, heart. Um, he had a heart for the people. He loved the people. Um, he prayed for the people. He lamented for the people. His heart was heavy for the people. He cried for the people. He said, God, you know, just give them grace. Just give them mercy. You know, God gives us brand new mercies each day. But they took their brand new mercy and they kept sinning. So judgment was coming. Judgment was coming. So people don't want to hear that you've got to repent. So the popular prophets are really not telling you that you've got to repent. You can't go out here doing everything. So, and, and the one thing that I'm going to tell you, if you ever go to a ministry and if you ever run into a person, um, I don't care if it's a prophet, preacher, teacher, elder. If somebody says that you've got to go through the same trials, tribulations, and you've got to go through the same hurdles. Jer the prophet Jeremiah was born a prophet okay he was born a prophet he hadn't gone through nothing he didn't do nothing his whole entire life but preach the word of god and the things the trials and tribulations that he went through were because he preached against sin like he was instructed to he reproved the people he warned them about the judgment of god but he was also an intercessory prophet he never told anyone to be in his like likeness or in his image he never really told the people you know to be like him but what he did teach the people was to hearken into the commandments of god let go of the sin nature stop doing certain things and follow god okay so i'm going to um you know because he talks about the judgment of babylon um, then he talks about the redemption of Israel, but in the book of Revelations, we see, I mean, not Revelations, but Lamentations, we do see the prophet Isaiah, and we see him lamenting on behalf of the people, okay? So the prophets need to pray in intercession for the people, that God will touch their minds, their hearts, and their spirit, and that their hearts will be turned to the word of God. So the prophetic properties of Jeremiah are as follows he was called to be a prophet from birth he went out he was a reproving prophet he was an intercessory prophet he was a prophet that went out and spoke boldly against sin and he told the people that if they continue to sin that there would be judgment he also allowed the people to know that God had plans and provisions of restoration and blessings for them. But the thing of it is, is that they had to turn from the prophets that were causing them to be delusional in their minds. Okay. It says they are dreaming dreams that I did not cause them to dream. So if you go to Jeremiah 29 verse 8. Uh, and read the whole chapter of Jeremiah You'll see that there was more than just that plan and that provision For I know the plans that I have for you God tried to bless them with the land of Canaan and the land of milk and honey All the way back in Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy And all the way up to the book of Numbers, Leviticus All the way up to the book of Joshua In the book of Joshua they make it into the land of honey But then we get to the bat battle of Ai Here God blessed them with all this land And then Achan, Achan or however you pronounce his name then he has to take the spoils of war God said don't touch this God said don't do that and I just gave you all this property all this land I just gave you a supernatural defeat over some enemies and you want to go and you want to touch the very thing that I tell you not to touch touched it hit it buried it in the ground what well, earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof God said who got it who got it who got who, who, who somebody did it so they had a military upset that caused the lives of people just for him to come up and say, I, I, I had the stuff, you know, stealing something or taking something that God said that you should not have came with consequences. So we've got to get into the word of God. We have got to know the difference between real prophets and false prophets. You got to get into the word of God so that you are not deceived. If you don't know, if you go to a church and a prophet of the house tells you to prophesy, 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 but he don't never tell you to get into the word of God. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. 
2 Timothy 2 and 15. So you got to study to show that you are approved by God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, we've got to know that if I know the word, I can tell the difference between the real prophets and I can tell the difference between the false prophets. So as I conclude today, the prophetic properties of Jeremiah should be prevalent in the hearts, minds, and the actions of the people today. You should be rebuking sin. You should be pointing people towards God. You should be encouraging people to uh, follow the commandments of God. You should also be telling the people to be steadfast. You should also be interceding and praying for the people that are in sin. And you are supposed to be mentoring and helping and loving on the people in spite of their sin nature okay so each one teach one each one preach one but if you are preaching preach the word because anything other than the word the bible says they that keep, they that speak of themselves seek their own glory and the holy spirit also i'm just gonna drop this bomb of a nugget on you real quick the holy spirit keeps uttering the word in my spirit they have their reward with them. They have their reward with them. They have their reward with them. There are people that are out here that have not reaped the benefits of heavenly rewards because their rewards, rewards are with them here. People have not re, um, have not began to gain rewards from heaven at all because they are being compensated right now here on this earth and. You know, instead of waiting to get the certain blessings that God promises us on the other side, they are running after them uh, per se in a negative fashion and negative capacity. And, you know, they will be getting denied. And, you know, as it says, and I know you're not your works of iniquity because the Bible says they that speak of themselves seek their own glory. So if you are, have one of those prophets and they always telling you about they self and all they business and they have made their ministry about the cat, the dog, the mouse, the rat, the, the drive to work each week, you know, that is not per se of God. You know, every blue moon, I will drop a testimony in and I'll be like, Lord, forgive me, but I would like to share this today with the people, you know, so I share sparingly because I don't want to be in violation of the words that are read, which were the words of God himself the god incarnate which is jesus christ i don't want to be in the uh i don't want to be i don't want to defile ministry i don't want to defile the message and i don't want to defi defile the um holy spirit or blaspheme the holy spirit by being outside of the ramifications of what god wants us to do because there are certain sins that god is not going to forgive and not going to allow in heaven so be blessed that is the prophetic properties of the prophet Isaiah. Get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. And remember that when you go to church, if your pastor, if your leader, if the person that is on that platform is not preaching the word, preaching the word, preaching the word, if they are not encouraging you to get into the word, if they are not encouraging you to study the word, if they are not telling you to repent, if they are not telling you to let go and lose sin, if they are not telling you to mortify sin like in the book of Colossians, then you might want to go to another church. It's good to have a church to go to to have some good praise and worship because everybody, you know, enjoys the emotionalism of all that. That. But it's the word of God, the word of God hidden in your heart that keeps you from sinning against God, keeps you in his will, keeps you in his way and keeps you straight forward and heaven bound. OK, I'm not here to send anybody to hell, but I am here to point everybody to God. So it's about self-reflection, self-evaluation, and it's about lining up with the word of God. OK. Jeremiah lined up with the word of God even if nobody liked him. Jeremiah lined up with the word of God and rebuked sin even if he didn't have a friend in sight. Jeremiah prayed for the people in spite of the people not liking him. Okay? So open up your eyes people get into the word of God see what the prophets from the Old Testament did and stay tuned for the next 
set of prophetic properties because I'm covering all of the major prophets right now. And then I'm going to go back and do individual prophets like Deborah, Gideon, Miriam, and some other folks. So stay tuned, stay posted because we've got to see what these prophets did in the Old Testament because God doesn't change. God does not change. And Jesus in the New Testament, it says, follow God in Ephesians 5 and 1. So if we're following God in the beginning, what's the word? The word was God. The word was with God. And then he became flesh to dwell among men. Jesus was the God incarnate. He put on flesh to come here to this earth to show us how to live circumspectly for God. So that's how we got to do it, just like Jesus. So until next time, remember if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. And this has been the prophetic properties of the prophet Jeremiah.